It's been over a year since I started working from home and a lot has changed. I started a new job in November and was interviewed and onboarded remotely. The structure of my team has changed and I've started coding a little bit too. If you want to see what my routine used to look like, I'll add a link in the description box below. But in this video, I will share an update on my working from home routine. <clears throat> I've not used this video effect in a while, so I'm hoping I'm not too rusty. But let's jump back a few hours to this morning to begin. Remember when I used to wake up at 6.30 a.m.? Well, I still do. Sometimes. I listen to my body a lot and I feel that if I need the extra sleep, I'll snooze till, till about half seven. That's the beauty of working from home. Today I got up at 6.30 because I wanted to get some work done on my YouTube videos before I started work work. By the time I've showered, had breakfast and caught up on WhatsApp, I'm ready to start working on my YouTube channel. I know that I'll be going for a run today, so I skip my morning walk so I have some more time to work on videos. Around 8.50 is still my time to catch up on emails and catch up on Slack messages. In my previous role, I worked a lot on local council projects, but in my new role, I'm more focused on education. I have a work laptop and a project specific tablet, so I try to make sure that my calendars align. I can see I have a user research session this afternoon, along with prep for a design meeting. At 9.45, I have a daily stand up with the project team. This looks a lot different to my previous role. Our project team is made up of a user researcher, content designer, UX designer, business analyst, delivery manager, product owner, quality tester, a front-end developer, and a back-end developer. We all hop on teams and discuss what was achieved yesterday and what we'll be working on today. Stand Up helps keep track of what everyone is working on in this sprint and also provides an opportunity to share any blockers we might have and see if other members of the team can help with this. At my new company, we work in Agile, which is an iterative approach to working. We work in two week sprints with each sprint building and improving on the lessons from the previous sprint. Today, I shared that I'll be setting up the iteration of the prototype for the service we're improving and noting any findings from the user research session that could feed into the designs. After stand up, I go straight into working on the prototype. My design tools are different with every project here. A big change is that I no longer use Sketch. Figma is the design tool of choice here alongside Visual Studio Code. I use Visual Studio Code to create the prototypes I'm working on using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. It makes the prototypes more interactive and responsive than Figma, and I'm also working with an existing design system, which helps speed up the design process. Coding has been a huge learning curve for me, but I'm really enjoying the process, and I think I've got to grips with the basics. I must throw out a disclaimer that not all designers need to know how to code. It depends on the company you work for and if it's required on the project. And even if you don't know how to code, this might be something you can learn on the job, like myself. Tuesdays are run days. During lockdown, I did the couch to 5k plan and it got me into running. I've tried working out at home, but this didn't really work. So running has been something that's worked well for me and I'm able to stick to it. It takes me just over half an hour to run. And when I get home, I shower and have lunch at my desk. I'd usually eat lunch in the kitchen, but today is a busy day. Back to work for the afternoon and I'm supporting Sophia our user researcher by observing and note-taking as she runs the sessions with a user. At first, I missed doing the user research as part of my new role, 
but working in Agile, you need someone to be working on this iteratively and it really requires someone on this on a full-time basis. She's also a specialist, which means she has a wealth of experience conducting user research. I learn a lot about the user needs for the service, as well as learning from her approach to conducting user research. Once the user research has finished, I roll back on to working on making changes to the prototype and can start to see some themes emerging from the session that we could iterate on for the next sprint. During this time, I get the occasional message in Slack about accessibility of a service and set a date to talk with them about this in detail. I also answer messages from our developer about the prototype who is setting up the test environment in line with the previous user tested prototype. As we head towards the last hour of the day, my mind shifts towards preparing for tomorrow. Tomorrow we have what's called a community of practice. All the designers across the company get together to check in, see how our week's going and share company updates. There will also be two short talks given by designers about a project they're working on. It's not my turn to share this week, but because I've been overseeing and building up the accessibility community here at Methods, I sometimes add a few slides to the presentation if we have updates on accessibility. Things are really gaining momentum in this space as colleagues reach out for advice on their projects and I'm excited to see what this will look like in a few months time. I'm hoping we'll have several accessibility champions within the team who can support others too. I usually sign out at half five and grab my headphones and listen to a podcast on my walk. These could be anything from design to well-being or productivity. I'm currently listening to Side Hustle Pro by Nikayla Matthews Okome. This podcast actually helped me get organized and back into filming my videos, as when I started my new role, it took a lot of getting used to and balancing social media with work life and home life was a struggle. So I simply dropped social media as a priority until everything was back in check. I try to be very mindful not to stretch myself too thin. In the tech industry, you hear about some people getting burned out, which is work-related stress or exhaustion, and I want to do my best to stay well. Wellbeing is something that my company highly supports. They give everyone access to the Calm app, private healthcare, and promote wellbeing. Hope you all enjoyed watching my updated day in the life video. So much has changed and if you have any questions about the new structure of my team or what it's like learning to code, let me know in the comments below. As always, have a wonderful week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!